house of God. Amen. And I just want to welcome you to the 103rd General Convocation of the House of God. All of our churches all over the world, we welcome you. I'd like to give honor to God, to the House of God, the Holy Church of the Living God, to build up the ground of the truth. I give special honor to our Chief Apostle, the Apostle Thomas Clark and his companion, Lady Frances Clark of Lexington, Kentucky. I also like to honor the assistant to the chief, the Apostle George Randolph Bailey, and his companion, Lady Juanita Daly. And also I want to honor my wife, elect Lady Jane Ragland. We honor the board of apostles and our wives. We give special honor also to the College of Bishops and their wives. I would be remiss if I did not honor all pastors who have been serving so diligently throughout the, 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 the last couple of years, especially through this pandemic. I want to honor our national officers who have served faithfully and has responded beautifully to the request that has been made upon them. So we take note of that and we honor you also. I want to especially say to our sister Stephanie Wallace, who is our National Program Committee Chair. She has swayed and moved and dipped and dodged and done a lot of things over the last few months to help make this program a success. She, we have changed several times, several things. Um, so we do want to thank she and her staff for the work that they have done. For an example, the theme of this meeting is finding our way back home. Why do we have this thing? Initially, we were looking forward to an in-house, in-person service. And we didn't have a convocation last year. So we were saying to the saints, welcome back home. Welcome back to Lexington, Kentucky. And then shortly, a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, the numbers start going up. The COVID-19 numbers start increasing. And we came together as an executive committee. We made the decision that it was not going to be beneficial to the saints that we would have an in-person meeting. And it was much disappointment and sadness of heart that we had to send out the announcement that we are not going to have an in-person meeting. And, and thankfully, the saints started responding and saying, we understand, we understand. But then I began to think about what is home? Where is home? Because we want to find our way back home. And my mind went back to the book of Genesis. You remember when Jacob had gotten his brother's birthright and he was on the run? And in his travels, he became tired one evening, one night, and he gathered some stones and he put those stones together just to have something to elevate his head, just to have somewhere to lay his head. But during that experience, God dealt with him. And when God dealt with him, he woke up the next morning and he said, wow, how dreadful, how awesome is this place? What was the place? Nothing but a pile of stones. But he said this about those stones. This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So no matter where you are, if you're in your living room, your family room, in your kitchen, and driving along in your car, wherever you may be tonight, this is the house of God. This is the gate to heaven. So we say again, welcome home. Hallelujah. Finding our way back home. Let me take this opportunity to introduce to you or present to you the chief apostle of the house of God. And our chief apostle will declare the service to be in session and also offer the opening prayer. God bless you, Apostle Thomas Clark. Greetings to all of you today. Uh, my name is Thomas E. Clark Jr. I am the presiding bishop and chief apostle of the house of God. It is my good pleasure today uh, to stand before you and make the declaration 
of the opening of our annual general convocation of the House of God for 2021. We're so thankful for our convocation this year. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to give honor and recognition to the leadership of the House of God, to Apostle George R. Daly and Lady Daly, uh, the Assistant Chief Apostle of the House, of, or the Assistant to the Chief Apostle of the House of God, uh, to Apostle James Ragland, who serves uh, as an executive of the House of God, and to Lady Ragland, to our Apostle Leroy Ricketts, who's the General Superintendent of Jamaica, and to his staff in the person of Bishop Webster and Bishop Erskine, uh, to all of the College of Bishops that make up the, the leadership of our church, to all the pastors and leaders uh, that are part of the House of God, to all of you today uh, that are listening and watching us today. It is an exciting time for me uh, as the Bishop of the Church to make the declaration of declaring our 2021 annual convocation in session. We were unable to do this last year uh, because of COVID-19, but this year we're, we're having convocation. It's going to be in virtual format, but we're thankful to God for the opportunity to share with you in our annual convocation this year. Uh, we long for the time when we can come together, uh, greet each other in person. But as all of you know, because of the uh, advent of COVID-19, which is a, a world pandemic that has not only impacted us here in the United States, but also to our international church uh, around the world. All of our churches have been impacted by COVID-19, uh, as uh, many other organizations have. But we're thankful to God today that he's giving us this opportunity to have uh, our virtual convocation this year. And it's my pleasure as the Bishop of the Church to make the declaration to open our convocation. But before I do that, I want to take a minute to acknowledge the goodness of God. Yes, the goodness of God that has blessed us in an unprecedented time. Uh, not only have we experienced COVID-19 over the last two years, but we've also had natural disasters, floods and fires and all of those things that have made life very difficult for all of our churches around the world. But God has been so gracious, so merciful and kind that through all of these things, that have impacted us, and, and even death in some cases. But he's been merciful, he's been kind, he's been gracious to see us through. And we are excited about what God has done. And in this convocation, we want to celebrate the goodness of God and all of the things that he's done for us in spite of COVID-19 in spite of the Delta variant, in spite of all the other variants that are mutations from COVID-19, God has been so good and merciful. So it is with great excitement and anticipation that I stand before you today. And I want to do special tribute and honor to all of you that have worked so faithfully in putting together the agenda for this convocation. There are many good things that we hope to share with you this year. Thank God for the opportunity. Now, having said that, I want to devote a few moments of prayer, thanksgiving to God for what he's done for us. Father and eternal God, we're so thankful to you for your blessings, your kindness, your mercy, your grace, your patience, your long suffering, your intervention in all of the affairs that have gone on with our lives during these past two years. Father, we never dreamed that we would not be able to have in-person convocation. But you've made a way for us. In our local assemblies, you've made a way for us. Even in our district and state meetings, you've made a way for us. 
in all of our obsessions that we've had virtually, God, you've made a way for us. And we thank you for that. I want to thank you, God, for your personal preservation for us and our families, for giving us vision, giving us creativity, that we might be able to continue to worship you uh, in those times when we've not been able to be in our local assemblies. You've been so faithful, God, and we thank you for it. And now, God, we thank you for this annual convocation that you've allowed us to have. And I pray, God, that your spirit will invigorate all the things that we plan, that we, that we plan uh, to present in your name. To every song, every sermon, every presentation, all the things that we plan to do, God, we invoke your presence upon our proceedings for this convocation. And we're so thankful, God, that you've made a way for us. We give your name praise, your name honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now having done that, it is my pleasure and distinct honor to declare the 2021 Annual Convocation of the House of God in session. We invoke your presence, God, upon our proceedings. And thank you for this opportunity. We pray that this convocation will be a blessing to all the members of the House of God, national and international, and to all of our friends and brethren that share with us during this exciting convocation. We pray God's blessings upon each of you, and we are certainly pleased to be able to share with you during this time. In Jesus' name, I exalt and declare this convocation in session for 2021. God bless all of you. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him right where you are. Lift your hands. Magnify the Lord tonight. Come on, come on, come on, right where you are. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and say something sweet to the Lord. Hallelujah, you've been so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy toward us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's been a good, good father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right at home. Hallelujah, wherever you are. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Thank you, God. Come on, let's offer him praise tonight. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. And, oh, Lord, we bless your name. And we lift our voice to say,
on, lift your voice right there. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Come on, say it from the depths of your soul. Get us up out of the bucket, Mary. We thank you for. 
Too much not to worship him. Oh, yeah. we, oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We are
to have church like we want to. <laughs> but when I think of Jesus, I didn't just say his goodness. But when I think of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my very soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God. Wonderful one um, to the saints, Chris. Now, and I also want to thank the praise team for doing such a splendid job with their uh, presentation and song and then and, and in music. Listen, music is such a vital part of the house of God. It'd be very, very, very difficult for us to have any kind of service without the aid of music. We have gotten that used to it, and it does enhance our services. I also want to thank. The director of our human resources department, our lady Toya Daly Smith. Lady Smith and her staff did an, an extremely beautiful job of gathering, gathering data. When we were talking about, we wanted to highlight the saints through testimony. We wanted to highlight what's going on in the churches, and we were toying with how we're going to do this. And at the same time, unbeknowing what we were doing, Lady Dylan Smith said, I'm going to send out a survey. And when I got the survey back, she had done an excellent job of capturing your experiences during the pandemic. We would love to, to present every pastor that responded comments. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. But when she, when she sent me the list, I didn't know who the pastors were. As I read the, the testimonies, I highlighted four that I want to share with you on tonight. We're going to share with you our um, testimonies from Pastor Roger Lovett in Lachlan, Ohio, Pastor Sandra Carls in Lancaster, Texas, and believe it or not, not knowing there was two of the, of the same family, we also have... Um, Pastor Quincy Slaughter of Dallas, Texas, and Bishop Harry Eve, Pastor Eve of Los Angeles, California. So I want you to sense the heartfelt testimonies that these pastors sent in talking about their experiences and experiences of their church members during the pandemic. The first one we want to share with you is Pastor Roger Lovett who's pastor of the Lachlan Church in Lachlan, Ohio. And some of the, the, the questions that our lady, Toya Dale Smith, asked in this survey, for example, she said, as a global pandemic, the challenges faced were shared among many of us. And she said, please share you as a leader. What was your approach with working with members through the challenges of mental health and physical sickness. And this is what Pastor Lover shared with her. I truly ask God to give me directions and helping to be helping the members during this time. And he did that. I found that many people just wanted to know that somebody cared about their well-being. So I did reach out virtually and called to check on saints as well as did some drive-by greetings and shout outs. We are blessed in our congregation to have some professional in education and medicine and on the medical and mental health field and they and they assisted us 
uh, greatly in trying to assist the saints um, by making themselves available, giving great information to help us deal with the challenges presented by the pandemic. Thank you, Pastor Lovett. And then one of the questions was, if you and your church members are coming out of the pandemic in a better place than where you, that you were when you went in, what would be that testimony that you will share? And this is what he says, absolutely, despite all the challenges the Almighty provided for the Lockton congregation, we were able to pay off our mortgage in May of 2019, and he has sustained us and put us in a very good financial shape to pay. Thank you, God. Amen, amen. And just like all of us, the question became, uh, did we try to offer services to our members during this pandemic? And if so, what did you do? And the answer pretty much came back the same for all of our pastors. They said we use Facebook Live, YouTube, Zoom, and some other people may be a little bit more creative to do some things. The pandemic brought with it some challenges um, that span virtually every area of our lives. Some may have lost loved ones, lost jobs, closed businesses, had challenges with educating children. And this was his response to that. I had some lost wages, but overall, God sustained us. God bless you, Pastor Lovett. My wife and I contracted COVID, and while my symptoms were mild, she had the worst of the sort of, sort of short of hospital, hospitalization. Yet my 17-year-old son and my 75-year-old mother-in-law living in the same house never contracted COVID. To God be the glory. Had a few friends that died from COVID, and we had some members they contracted it, but no fatalities among the saints. God bless, God bless. And the question was, what was the greatest challenge you faced in continuing church operation through the pandemic? And the law of the church replies, I guess it was keeping people motivated to press through the difficulties of not having an in-person service and looking for God to be a blessing through the remote and online services. And they, did you have to implement anything new or innovative? And what did you do? He said, of course, we have to utilize technology and virtual services, but we were able to see the need to have this tool and it's definitely a part of our service moving forward. Um, Pastor Lovett, like so many of the rest of us, we have found the value in this, and guess what? It's going to be utilized even going forward. So the question becomes, in this past pandemic, what lesson are you learning? And he said that God truly is faithful, and that we can strengthen all of us. He will strengthen all of us. Amen? Thank you, Pastor Lovett, for sharing that with us. And we're praying God's blessing upon you you and your congregation and your family and my conversation with you and members of your congregation, I do know that the Lord is still in the blessing business. God is still blessing the Lachlan Church. The Lachlan Church suffered a great loss as we as a national church did. That was, is with the loss of our um, digger John Hamlin. No one anticipated it. But God is all knowing. He's all wise. And even though we don't necessarily understand, we give place and pay homage uh, to his will. The, the next pastor that um, I pulled from these group of pastors was our lady Sandra Carr, Lancaster, Texas. And she, she followed the same format with the questions to first was being the challenges that were faced as a leader. And her said, praise to God, unemployment did not impact the working members during this pandemic. The church ministry uh, leaders worked together to collaborate with professionals within our current organization to speak on and educate the saints. 
on the importance of mental health, suicide prevention, remote patient visit. We utilize the expertise of nurses, police officers, school counselors, and school principals provided with us information to we can be able to find the help that we need. And I, I, I can echo the professional services that our church provided um, through our social work department, our lady, um, one of the Brickman, uh, the Brickman was, was very instrumental in our local church as providing speakers and whatnot that gave the saints information so we can um, echo what Lady Cobb's experience. Um, but then the question is, if you or your church members are coming out of the pandemic in a better place, uh, just share that testimony. This is what she said. Sometimes less is more. It's amazing how we survive and are surviving without many things. Things we took for granted. Going on vacation, schools, family visits, going out to eat at the restaurants, and other, going to other venues for entertainment. Um, we may do without many of those things, and we survive. These things are great and important, but we can do without them when we need to. We can still do church well while doing fewer activities. Amen. The pandemic has forced us to make hard calls about some of our church programs. Sanitizing will continue to be in place going forward. Amen. She too used Zoom and other methods to communicate and educate the saints. Um, the challenges of having a virtual service of everything in our lives seemed like it became virtual, the loss of loved ones and, and whatnot. And her response to uh, how she was affected by this in her church. At the time of the gathering this data, this is what she said. She said, although the pandemic isn't truly over, and the highly contagious Delta variants of COVID-19 is sweeping through Texas, unvaccinated, and including the vaccinated are in risk. There is a relief that those that have been vaccinated are able to gather again with one another. Children that were homeschooled completed the school year successfully. No loved ones were lost in that immediate congregation. Those that were infected with the virus did not have to be hospitalized. Unfortunately for um, our Pastor Cobb, and that shortly after she responded, to this survey, she, her, her mother, Mother Washington, who was 89 years old, uh, had contracted COVID and Mother Washington lost the battle just a couple weeks ago. So Lady Cobbs and the churches, not just the, her church, but all the churches in Texas and the Midwest, we're praying for you and we're trusting God will see you through even with the loss of Mother Washington. What was the greatest challenge? Face continuing church operations through the pandemic. She said responsibility to protecting the saints. And anything to help stop the spread of the virus. Finding a good balance for what worked to accommodate everybody. Do what best for them and the safety of their families. Take better care of our elders and our, our disabled family, friends, and neighbors. Stand in compliance with the CDC regulations, state and governmental mandates. That's something that was given to us and I believe most of our churches adhere to that. And if you implemented any new or innovative ways to address the challenge, share with us what you did. And she said, I implemented and required assessments of who would be attending per week for each family, arranged seating, limited service and time, mass required during the entire service, Mass provided if needed, temperature checks, and the things that all of us uh, probably did in our churches, making sure our church was sanitized and um, fully cleaning and sanitizing after, after the various services that was collected money by 
cash out. Um, I was selling, so there won't be as much hand on, on contact. And she too had uh, more than five members to contract a COVID in her congregation. But what lesson did you learn? Lady Cobb, she said family matters. And she said this before she lost her mother. And my heart, I, my heart just bled for her. And I've spoken with Lady Cobb personally after the loss of her mother. And this is what she said. She wrote this um, before she lost her mother. She says family matters more than we realize. Letting go of past issues, forgiving each other, making new memories, realizing we need each other, maintaining relationships, even if they had to be through technology to stay in touch. God bless you, Lady Cobbs, and as I mentioned just a moment ago, we'll continue, continually praying for you and the saints in Texas with the loss of Mother Washington. The next pastor that we highlighted, uh, believe it or not, happened to be Lady Cobb's son, and that is our vicar, Bishop Quincy Slaughter, who was also in Texas, he's in Dallas, Texas. And we asked a series of questions to him, and you kind of know the heading. And this is what he said, he talked about as a leader. He said, most of what I've done as a leader was to be as visually present for my congregation as I possibly could during those times. My wife and I, along with the ministerial staff, set different offices, office hours to be present on Zoom for any saints that needed us. Doing this allowed us to continually present for to continually present for membership and help take some of the load off of them. I love that um, Pastor Slaughter that you're making yourself available with office time, even though it was too soon. And we, we're looking at better place and being in, uh, in this pandemic, uh, pandemic or coming out of it. He said, we as a congregation were able to purchase our church in February 2020. We also as state superintendent of Texas created an assistant program to help our churches in need during the pandemic. And he said that we want to continue to be resourceful and going forward and being a blessing to the saints using Zoom and other methods and challenges challenges faced by the Dallas church or one of our Dallas uh, churches that when it comes to losing saints and of course if you know uh, the location and the membership there there was a heartfelt loss he said although the pandemic isn't truly over and the highly contagious Delta variant of COVID-19 is sweeping through Texas unvaccinated and including vaccinated um, are at risk there is a relief that those, I'm sorry, he said, honestly, the Lord kept us. We did lose a member of that congregation. Some of you know Brother Philemon, a new Brother Philemon Morrison. He was the son of the late Bishop Willie Morrison and, and, and our lady, uh, Rose Catherine Morrison. Um, it was a very trying and difficult time for the family congregation and church. No jobs were really lost by any within our congregation. And many of the saints thriving during the pandemic got raises, <laughs> new homes, new business opportunities. Oh yes, oh yes. He said that the saints in Dallas, even in the sense of loss, um, were truly blessed. He said, I created a lot of pre-recorded power studies and I hadn't thought about this as a pastor the how you how you gonna be innovative to get this done. He said I created pre-recorded virus Bible studies that the saints could view at any time. Um, we also created an email blast to the congregation as well as the community in which we called it straight from the pastor's heart. This is a daily word sent out for encouragement and connection to the saints um, and abroad. Love that, love that pastor slaughter. And then the thing is, what's the greatest lesson you learned through the pandemic? 
He said, I learned it is important to listen to the science and remain spirit-led during the pandemic. I also learned that even in the difficult circumstances, God created ways for his people to connect and fellowship. I guess the greatest lesson learned is God is really greater than the four walls. I said it, but through experience, I really believe it now. God is greater than four walls. Amen, amen, Pastor Slaughter. We thank God for, for you and your innovative uh, approach to keeping the church going. And the last of our testimonies, and I thank you, Saints, for, for staying with me through this. Um, because when talking with our chief apostle, he had one main goal for this congregation. He said, for this congregation, he said, I want it to be about the saints. I want to know what the saints are experiencing. I want to know their, their challenges. I want to know their joys. I want to know that the things that have happened throughout this, this world with our saints and how they have fared through this. And you can see already from the three examples that we've, we've shared with you how the saints and the pastors are been innovative. And what I also see, I want to commend the congregants. I want to commend the saints for being supportive of the pastors through this experience. Let's, let's keep it real. If your congregation don't support you, you can have all kinds of innovative ideals. But if they don't help you, you will never get them implemented. So to the churches, to the membership of our local churches, we thank God for how you have just been there for the people. And we also want to share with you, as our last person to be highlighted, is that Bishop Harry Eves, Los Angeles, California. So since I'm giving name recognition and shout out, um, our Bishop Eve is actually the son of, of one of the greatest general secretaries we have had in this church. And that is uh, Lady Eve. Lady Eve served, I don't know how many years, but that, that, that spirit of service must have fallen upon um, her son because he was asked the question, but as a leader, what did you do? He never said, Mama told me. He never said, I'm doing this because Mom showed me how to do it. But he, he did say this. As a leader, my goal was to keep the congregation together and help members as needed. I was able to provide some personal financial assistance to those who needed it. During the pandemic, I officiated several funeral services and comforted families during and after those services. Although visitation was limited at hospitals, I was able to still make calls to sick members and families. For those who need food, uh, we partnered with an organization to start our food ministry to help our saints and others affected by the pandemic. He said, what is uh, Bishop Eve saying? He said, I'm not only thinking about my congregation. He said, I live in one of the largest cities um, in the United States, Los Angeles, California. And while I'm not gonna just look for ways to help the Los Angeles church there. So he said, but I'm looking for ways to help the community. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Bishop Eves. I think that you did a marvelous job. He said, you and your church members are coming out of the pandemic. If you could be in a better place, what would that testimony look like? He said, I can't speak for the current mental state of the saints during the ongoing pandemic. In California, we now have mass restrictions indoors and outdoors. When the pandemic is over, I feel that our church will be in a better place. We have gained the support of willing workers who have contributed to our ministry and are preaching the gospel to the wider audience. And we are meeting the needs of the people through our outreach initiatives. The pandemic had definitely caused us to adapt in a way that has expanded our ability to reach the lost and establish new, meaningful, and effective ministries. Pastors, let me just encourage
encourage you, if you have not done this yet, look for ways, look for what is called best practices, and look for how other pastors have fared through this and the creative things that they have done and still doing. Don't be one of those that said, I'm just going to try to get through. We are encouraging you and we're giving you these testimonies tonight that you will be able to share. Even though he had, he knew how to use Zoom and other technology, but he is saying that I'm still looking for ways to do things differently. Um, and how are you affected? Huh? Did you lose loved ones? Did your members lose jobs? Or, or the, the business closes? And this is what he said. Personally, when the pandemic hit, our children, all of our children in the congregation, was sent home and finished the school year and began the next school year online, which is pretty much a story throughout the country. All of his children did well. Several families lost loved ones due to COVID and others were lost due to other causes. Some were laid off because of slow businesses. During the pandemic, some lost permanent housing but they were able to find temporary housing. In the meantime, all in all, my family and congregation made it through and we are blessed. God continued to be with us even while the Delta variant presents its challenges. Saints, so we can hear um, the heartfelt cry from our Pastor Eve. Let us be mindful to keep the, the, the church, all the churches in prayer. But when I hear of saints losing jobs, we don't have that testimony here in Virginia. Um, but when I hear saints losing jobs, and, and just as important, and more important, are losing permanent homes and have to have temporary homes. We know God will sustain us. But these are our brothers and our sisters. So let us be so mindful to keep them in our prayers. And we say, what's your greatest challenge face? continuing church operation through the pandemic. And what he said, we had to quickly invest in cameras, upgrade of Wi-Fi, software, and other equipment to establish a media ministry. This is what he said, we didn't have a media ministry. Some of our churches record weekly and, and we do various things. But he said, as a congregation, we didn't even have a media ministry, but we recognize I need to quickly do something to establish a media ministry. We also had to severely uh, limit any attendance and in-person services. The state of California is restricted on indoor service and how you could worship outside. We wanted to keep our saints together and connected to the church even if we couldn't meet. And that was the creativeness of many of our churches. How can we keep our saints together. Some of our states and, and localities say you can't have more than some and areas of the period during this pandemic. You can't have more than five or ten people in the inside the building. Well, for our local church, that was just the production team. So the saints were not able to attend. It was and I and I echo the sentiments of Bishop Eves. And then they said, what well, innovative ways that you create to address these challenges. He said, yes, as discussed, we established a media ministry to broadcast our services. We established a presence on social media, Facebook and Instagram. Also, we recruited a media team to send messages to the church members, develop flyers, advertising our services, and prayer calls. And we established an outreach food ministry to help those who had food needs during the pandemic. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Eves. And of course, he said we had more than five people who experienced COVID. What was the greatest lesson you learned through the pandemic? This is what Bishop Eves had to say. We learned that if necessary, we can innovate and adapt to the restrictions imposed by the pandemic. For example, we went from an in-person service and we were able to quickly adapt 
to broadcasting our services online through Facebook. We intentionally shorten the length of our services so limited exposure for those present in the sanctuary. And I know, in talking to many pastors, that was the one big challenge throughout our churches where we found out that you know how we love to stand and repeat the commandments in its entirety. We, you know how our church liturgy, liturgy could take sometimes up to 20 minutes. Well, we have to understand that the summary of the commandments serve just as well as re reciting all 10 of them. And those are some of the kind of things that the pastors had to recognize, I got to shorten the service. Some of those long testimonies we gave, <laughs> um, some of those people that, you know, would stand and testify 10, 15 minutes. We had to say, brothers and sisters, we're not having testimony service. Uh, not today, but we had to create other times for the people to express testimonies. So to the brothers and sisters that uh, shared their testimonies, and to all of you that shared in the survey conducted by our human resource department, we want to say thank you. You did a splendid, splendid, splendid job. And I want to say I took the time to read through them as I know Apostle Clark and Apostle Daly has done also. And when Apostle Daly and I was talking on the phone, he is saying, wow, this is good. This is good because we were going through um, what has been given to us. And I want to say that to our uh, international church, on tomorrow evening, you will hear testimonies from all over the world. Amen. We're making sure that everybody has an opportunity to express God has blessed this church. Amen. God has given us places and that we have never been to and probably never get to. I was talking to Apostle Dillon and he said we have 15 countries, not 15 churches, 15 countries in Africa where we have churches. And that's just a sampling of our church membership throughout the world. So again, to Pastor Lovett, Pastor Carl, Pastor Slaughter, and Pastor Eve, we thank you for your testimonies and we trust that your testimonies has been a blessing and an inspiration to our pastors and our membership. God bless you. At this time, Saints, we're going to give you over to Deacon Walter Preston, who's the general treasurer of the House of God and his finance team, that they're going to secure the offering and share with you the various ways that you can give, not just tonight, but throughout this convention. And after Deacon Preston has completed the offering, the next voice you will hear as a sermonic selection will be that of our Sister Twyla Jackson. Our Sister Twyla sings with Pharrell Williams and Voices of Fire. I know many of you have been exposed to them, has shared with them and their music. But thank God she's one of our own and she serves right here with the Gordonsville Church. So God bless you, Sister Twyla Jackson. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to thank you for taking the time to join us for our virtual 2021 convocation. Before we take up our offering as the national treasurer, I want to personally say thank you to all of you that have continued to support the church financially during the pandemic. Whether it was the state meetings or our district meetings, you continue to show your support for the church. I also want to give a special thank you to our state superintendents, our district superintendents, all of our auxiliary leaders that came together to make their reports to make sure you continue to support this grand old house of God. Now, if we were together, this is what I would ask you to do. God loves a chill forgiver. I want to see your teeth. I want to see you smile. And that's what I would ask you to do as you sit in the comfort of your own home as you enjoy this convocation. So as we take up this offering today, this is my simple ask. Whatever the Lord has blessed you with, we ask you to give as God has given unto you. On the screen, you'll actually see all the mediums on which you can give. You are a blessing to the house of God. You are a great people. And we just ask you to give as God has given unto you. So God bless you, and hopefully next year we will see each other face to face.
you for joining our 2021 convocation. And at this time, we're gearing to take up one of our speaker's offerings. And this is a special offering as I think about the man of God that is going to bring forth the word of God. And that's my own pastor, Apostle James Bradley. And what I can personally say is Apostle James Bradley, I met him and he was actually one of the first people that brought me into the house of God. Now, many of us know him. I think he missed his calling as a comedian, but don't let that fool you because he is a man of God that is deep in the word of God, that understands the word of God. And I can say this, he loves the people of God. When I first joined the church, he was a deacon. He served faithfully in that role. And as God has continued to elevate him, he has been faithful. So tonight, we're going to ask you to be a blessing to this man of God as he brings forth the word of God. Be a blessing in your offering to him because he is a blessing to us. And we are glad that he is a part of the grand old house of God. So again, we thank you for your financial contributions. Thank you for everything that you continue to do. We love you. We miss you. And God bless you.
Thank you, Sister Twyla, again for such an inspirational selection, letting us know that in the good times, we can praise His name. And even in the bad times, pandemic times, we can do the same. But the most important thing we need to remember is to give the King of Kings all the praise. Again, we give honor to our yeah, Chief Apostle and, and to the whole household of God. Just want to take a few minutes and share a word with you. Um, if you would, go with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 2. And this is a familiar scripture for us because this is the time that we are talking about when the Holy Ghost fell. When the Holy Ghost was given. And we get so excited about the past, about the filling, indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And let me just read verse 1 in Acts chapter 2. It said, And when the day of Pentecost, Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one, with one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. My thought on this evening is, is when the house gets filled, but you didn't. Huh? When the house got filled, but you didn't. What am I saying today, saints? This is what we are dealing with, uh, not just now, but throughout um, uh, over several years now, I've recognized that many of our pastors and many of our churches are endorsing people to have the Spirit of God that they didn't get it. And now, while we're in the middle of a pandemic, some people are throwing up their hands and walking away. I can't do church the way y'all are doing it. I can't do Zoom. I can't do Facebook Live. And I'm not talking about the children. I'm talking about the grown-ups. I'm talking about people that name the name of the Lord. I'm talking about people that are saying that I am saved, I'm sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't quite, I'm not questioning anybody. But I'm simply reminding you, on the day of Pentecost, there was a couple of things that happened, and we missed the thing that happened. In verse 2, it simply says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing by the wind. And we know that experience. Amen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And unfortunately, that's what is happening today. Because of the great music we have, the inspirational services we have, we have organs and drums and lead guitars, bass guitars, and there are other instruments that I can't even name that make up many of our church orchestra. But guess what? That, that calls the, the Spirit of God to move among us. And they have wonderful songsters that sing praises unto the Lord. And you can sit in a congregation, you can sit in a house. Uh, and in that house, while you were sitting in that house, the Holy Ghost come in. And you just feel the Holy Ghost. You feel the move of it. You see the saints swaying. You see the rejoicing. You see saints dancing and jumping and clapping their hands. And you see saints speaking in tongues. And you are in the midst of that. And while you are in the midst of that, uh, the house is filled. But you felt something. You felt the move, you felt the quickening, you felt the Spirit of God move upon you. But unfortunately, many people got up from that experience and made a declaration that I have received the Spirit of God. And unfortunately, I am here to declare to you tonight that what has happened to many of the saints, a many of the people that have, are professing the Spirit of God, the house got filled, but they didn't. But you're saying, Pastor James, I'm saying that we got to make sure that we allow and we promote the process to be worked out to its conclusion. Look at, look at verse 3 in Acts chapter 2. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It did stop there, did it not? Huh? In the day of Pentecost, after the house got filled, people began to speak with clothing, clothing tongue. What is clothing tongue? Now we said it a lot. Clothing tongue is simply a split tongue. Meaning that you're speaking in your natural language and you're speaking uh, in, in, in another language and you're going back and forth. But guess what, saints? That's not it. I hate to tell some of you, but that's not it. That's not the conclusion of it. Then we look 
and it said, it came in and like fire and set upon each of them. And verse 4 is what so many people are missing today. They got in the house. The house was still filled. Holy Ghost filled the house. It even lit upon them. And some of them began to speak with clothing tongue, going from English or whatever language they, that natural language is to another tongue. And they thought that was it. But I have to let you know that wasn't it. And then it says in verse 4, and they were filled, praise God, with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave on us. Let me just say to my say, if you have not had this total experience, you are still missing something. And that's why it's so difficult for many of the people to be agreeable. That's why it's so difficult for many of those that said, I named the name of the Lord, can you hold it? Let's be real about this thing. People today, is, because of what we're experiencing, it is proven that many people that are professing to the Spirit of God simply don't have it. Go with me to the book of Romans. I'm not going to be before you long tonight. Go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 6. Verse 1, Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What are we saying? Many of the pastors, many of the churches are endorsing a weak form of the Spirit of God. We act like, and we are letting people know, go ahead on baby. Huh? You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do this. I'm not saying you're not going to make mistakes. But we should not give you from the beginning the expectation of you making mistakes. Of you sinning, you doing things out of God's will. From the time that you had that true Holy Ghost experience, your expectation or the expectation of you should not be that you're going to sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound? Yes, we are in a dispensation of grace. Yes, we thank God for His grace. But his grace is for those who are holy. His grace for those who are righteous. Thank God for his mercy for everybody else. But for those who are holy, for those who are sanctified, God said, I'm going to extend grace unto you that you may be perfected. I'm not extending grace to you that you can sin. It says in verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. The day and night that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you died to sin. And if you didn't die to sin, you missed something. Let's be real. Time now says that we, we're going to preach us. We're going to have to make this thing plain to the people that look, if you didn't die to sin, let me just say you didn't get it. <sighs> How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You received the Holy Ghost last night. Tomorrow night you are sinning. Next week you're sinning. You're sinning every week. And you're professing to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. God forbid. Somebody got in a situation where the room got filled. They felt good. But they missed the Holy Ghost. I'm going to drop down to verse 4. It says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life. You got the Holy Ghost and your life didn't change. You got the Holy Ghost and you still want to sin. You got the Holy Ghost. You can't keep your mouth. Uh, you still want to gossip. You still want to commit fornication. You still want to commit adultery. What Holy Ghost did you get? You have a newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we should also be in the likeness of his resurrection. When you came up off that altar, you should have a resurrection experience. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, I'm not talking about people tonight that uh, have, have, have done something wrong, have erred, have committed a sin. 
I'm talking about those who are practicing sin. We have those that are practicing sin, serving sin, and professing to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. I don't understand. We can't do both. We can't say we're spirit-filled and practicing sin. Because if we're dead, we're free from sin. Verse 10 said, For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. When you got the Holy Ghost, you died unto sin. And your life since that time should be a life that you're living unto God. Ah. Verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. You got the Holy Ghost. You can't let sin reign in your mortal body. You're speaking in tongues, professing that God lives in you. If that be the case, you cannot let sin reign in you. You cannot let it reign. You have to kill it in your body. You cannot obey sin. Hallelujah. Verse 14 said, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Thank God for grace. <sighs> People want to use grace as an excuse to do whatever they want to do. But saints, pastors especially, let me just say, when we have those among us that we can tell they did not get the Holy Ghost, let me ask you this. The first time you experienced Holy Ghost, some of you thought you had it, you hadn't experienced it before. You really don't know what the Holy Ghost feel like. You heard the testimonies of the saints and you have mimicked some of that, but you really don't know what the Holy Ghost, I thank God for this. And I, and I come to a legacy of, of, of individuals. My father, some of y'all knew, and many of you knew the late Apostle Randolph Franklin. Young man, came out of the world, came out and, and decided he wanted to serve God. And the Lord blessed him and he testified that he had the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this went on for some time. And there was an old minister looked at him one day and said, Brother Adler, the Lord wants to um, finish his work. He's not finished with you yet. He wants to finish his work. And in that experience, this man was doing some sinful things. My father said, he said, I started telling him, well, you still eating pork. You still doing that. He said, but I didn't say a word. That was on the Sabbath day. He didn't tell anybody what the man said. That Sunday night, he went to church. He was up in the congregation. The Spirit of God got high. And he was holding my younger brother, Wesley. And he said, his mother, Mother Early Radley Moppin, came over here and, to him. And the Spirit is spoken in his ear and said, son, God wants to finish his work. He said, the last day he remembered that he threw Wesley, somebody caught Wesley, and the last day he knew that he was speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Can you imagine if he had tried to operate under what he had or what he thought he had? I remember myself as a teenager. Uh, we had a revival service. Mother Irene Butler was here from Norristown running the revival service. And I was, um, and that's why I'm not really a big proponent of terror services. Too many people left terror services professing something they didn't have. But I, that night, I felt when the room got filled. <laughs> I felt when the spirit got high. I really felt even something running through my body. I was remember speaking in clothing tongues. And I profess that I had the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I praise God for my father. I went home the next day. And my father had his own business. And I'm sitting there working with him all day long. I probably did the best day of work I've ever done in my life. And that evening, before we came back to the revival service that night, my father was in the bathroom shaving. He said, James, come here. He said, I heard your testimony last night. But I got to tell you, you didn't get it. Praise Hallelujah. Praise be to God. For I too could have run off thinking that I had something that I didn't have. But I thank God for my father. And I didn't go back. When I went back that next night, I fell on the altar for terrorist services again. And guess what? I didn't get it. I finished up my high school years. I didn't get it. But praise be to God. One Sabbath afternoon on 3rd Street in Dayton, Ohio. Hallelujah. I was attending a service with the late Bishop S.L. Henry. And the power of God came through that afternoon. And I can say it filled me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When I came to myself, 
I could hear one of the saints of Bishop Henry. Somebody had called my father and said, Did James had James spoken in tongues? Does he have the Holy Ghost? My father said, Not that I know of. Bishop Henry said, Well, he's speaking now. Oh, glory, glory, praise God. That's what I'm talking about. That we have to understand that you can be in the room. And the room get filled. And you feel good about it. Hallelujah. You have all the what you think is the Holy Ghost. You have all the makings, all the outward experiences. You're jumping, you're shouting, you're running around the church, you're praising God, and you still didn't get it. Hallelujah. But it's my prayer tonight. Hallelujah. That if you feel you may not have gotten it. And you may have testified for 20 years to it. But you know what? You know you've lived a miserable life of sin. A miserable life of sin is not being in the world. A miserable life of sin is being in the church and professing the Holy Ghost that don't have it. But I want you to know tonight there's hope. Wherever you are in your home, living room, your bed, or wherever you may be, in your kitchen. Hallelujah. God can truly fill you. He won't just... Most of us ain't, ain't gonna have the, the experience of our home. We don't have the music. We don't have all of these things. But I will let you know this. God will finish the work. Hallelujah. And for you that are not professing to having the Spirit of God, I want you to know you can get it. Christ died for you. Hallelujah. He died that you may have a right to the tree of life. Mama's salvation, daddy's salvation, Aunt Susan, Uncle Bob, their salvation is not going to get you through. I'm making an appeal tonight. Hallelujah. There's anybody out there, oh, praise God, that don't know their way to get to the Christ, get to the Lord. They don't understand how to receive it. And they too embarrassed to say, I didn't, I thought I got it, but I didn't. Listen, baby, you can call me because I had that experience. Uh, just, just give me, you can get my information. And not only mine, I know the other pastors are, are willing to work with you. Some of them may not have had my experience. But I will say this, I'm willing to have that conversation. I don't want you lost. Hallelujah. I don't want you out of the heart of safety. And as our tradition is, tonight we're extending an invitation to you. Hallelujah. You don't have to be in the room. When the room gets filled, you too can be filled. So as we say, uh, this is a national convocation, but the doors of the church are open. You can just put it, hallelujah, uh, in, in, in the Facebook chat. So, and, and somebody will be contacting you to recognize that you want to be a part of this grand old house of God. Uh, we will accept you and in your membership to the great organization. Hallelujah. And if you're already a part and recognize that you're empty, you're not complete, and you want to talk to somebody, my name is on, is it in the, on the house of God webpage. My phone number is on the house of God webpage. Since I serve, hallelujah, as the, um, the, 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 the national director of the, of the house of God, you can get my information. Contact me. We can talk. I don't want you to go another day, another moment, hallelujah, without the opportunity to be spirit-filled. God bless you, saints. May heaven smile upon you. May God be with you. And may he bless you through the remainder of this pandemic. We give you back now to our chief apostle, that he may have the final remarks and benediction. God bless you, and we love you. I want to thank God tonight for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we thank God for his presence in our service tonight. We do give his name honor and praise and to all the executive staff of the House of God and to all of you that have been so devoted in making these services uh, what they have been and making the services success. Thank God for his visitation uh, in our service tonight. We've had a glorious time. And we appreciate the idea that God has blessed us to have this virtual convocation this year. We appreciate all of you that have shared tonight, all of the preached word, all of the testimonies, 
all that have gone before God. Just excited so much that God has allowed us to have our convocation uh, this year. Thank all of you, and we honor God for his Holy Spirit that visited us in our service tonight. We pray that you continue to pray for us as we proceed through our annual convocation this year. Yes, it's a little bit different, and I'd love to be looking at you in person, but our virtual convocation this year has been a, a tremendous opportunity for us to serve God and to fulfill our mission in having a general annual convocation. So I'm gonna close now uh, with God's blessings on each one of you and for your service. God, we thank you for the opportunity to serve tonight. We thank you for your visitation. We thank you for your preached word. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for all of those, God, that have blessed us uh, in the richness of the service. We ask God that you will bless us uh, as we continue uh, each one of our services. And we close tonight with the benediction saying, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless each one of you.